And now for our final speaker, uh, Richard Fortin is a geophysicist with the Airborne Geophysics Section of the Geological Survey of Canada. He holds a BSc in Physics and an MSc in Earth Sciences. He's involved in the quality control and data analysis of regional airborne geophysical surveys and spends a significant amount of time in the development of data acquisition analysis methods for ground and airborne gamma ray spectrometry for both geophysical and nuclear emergency uh, response. He initially worked with the, in environmental geophysics and, and uh, uh, he spent a few years in the airborne geophysics industry before joining the GSC in 2008. Let's welcome Richard Fortin. Um, I'm pleased to, uh, to be here this morning to provide this uh, update, I guess, on airborne gamma ray uh, spectrometry. I'm also pleased that it was included in, uh, in, in the program. Uh, there's been a tradition of uh, showcasing uh, um, development in uh, gamma ray spectrometry in this series of, of conference, uh, although it was missing uh, in 2007. So I'm happy to be, uh, to be back or bring the method, I guess, back uh, in, in the spotlight. Um, I will uh, um, uh, mention my uh, co-author on this uh, on this paper, uh, Jens Avgard from uh, Radiation Solutions uh, Incorporated, who is an unfortunately not uh, not here uh, today. He's down in uh, Atlanta, I think, on the uh, IEEE uh, Symposium on Nuclear uh, Science. And uh, Martin Bates from Center of Geophysics, who promised, uh, who said he would be here if I promise to not cut out his part, the part he contributed in the talk, so hopefully he's somewhere around, so you'll be able to judge if it's there. Um, so uh, let's jump right in quickly. Um, uh, AGRS, uh, airborne gamma ray spectrometry, is a, is a really mature uh, technique uh, now. It's been used for, uh, I mean, decades. Uh, 40 years at least, 50 even of, of development, and um, the, the, the turn into the late legal age for uh, airborne gamma ray spectrometry, if I can say so, you know, it's it's it's, it's not out as as simple, but uh, I would say 1991 with uh, the publication of the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency uh, guidelines on, uh, on airborne gamma ray spectrometry. Uh, definitely compile everything that had been done into in terms of development and trials and errors on, 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 the, on the different uh, methodology, different part of the, of the, of the technique. Um, so that that's probably uh, th those those guidelines became de facto standards uh, in the industry, and it's really what it's used. You can al almost uh, copy and paste uh, uh, the technical requirements that are in this document into most contract that we see today on on airborne gamma ray spectrometry. Um, of course, there was a lot of development before. It was somehow routine also before 1991, but uh, just uh, just for the for the idea of putting like a reference or a point of reference uh, for the development. Um, uh, so the the, the methodology uh, in this document is really uh, really robust. You know what we have now is really robust, really efficient, and very simple too. Uh, so it's it's a fairly easy processing to implement in any any computer now, any uh, software uh, processing software. Um, it's uh, routinely flown in uh, tandem now. All the, the the specification or the, 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 the yeah the specification uh, were were made so it's in line with uh, airborne magnetics so it's uh, often uh, uh, flown in uh, in tandem uh, with airborne magnetic and uh, as as mentioned it's routinely flown uh, it's uh, there's a wealth of data uh, available uh, on, in all part of the world for sure in, in Canada there's some some areas that are covered in all the core zone uh, Labrador, Labrador trough area in Quebec and. Uh, uh, the Tabasco Basin in in, uh, in Saskatchewan are all covered in in uh, in the new um, uh, gamma ray spectrometry data, which is uh, which is very interesting to uh, to look at. Uh, however, um, there is still a, a sense uh, that that data set, uh, this type of data, is not necessarily used to its uh, its full potential. Uh, there definitely are um, convert, I would say, or believers. Uh, that know what to do with it, uh, but uh, there's a lot of lot of non-initiate that don't necessarily know how to handle that data, and they will look for uh, like anomalies, big honking anomalies of, in uranium, and that's that's it. But it's much more than that. Um, and uh, some of the 
the way why it's it's like that it's maybe it's it 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 need you know you need to have a to understand a bit more what it is and there's difficulty i guess in deciphering what what's in the data um and it's it's maybe due to uh to uh, uh, often there's uh, some statistical noise, statistical uncertainties in the data due to, to the, the actual, uh, it's intrinsic to, to uh, the radioactive uh, decay process. Um, and it, it's also uh, the, the detectors are being omnidirectional and uh, having a very wide footprint. There's, uh, depending on the scale of the survey, uh, it's uh, like boundaries are blurred uh, between the features. Uh, so that's another thing. Uh, so. Um, uh, that need to be probably uh, probably improved. Um, you know, it's not uh, it's not like in uh, aeromagnetic where pretty much anybody can take a, a map and figure out what's happening. Uh, you can do that on some uh, airborne gamma ray spectrometry maps, but it's not always the case. Although there is always useful information um, to uh, to get out. Um, so there's a need to um, increase what I call the readability of airborne gamma ray spectrometry data, uh, uh, so that uh, the, the end products you can you can capture uh, at first glance interesting information from 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 the the end product before actually going to more more analysis. Um, how do I switch? The oh yeah, there we go. Um, so. Uh, I didn't need to, anyway. Over the last 10 years, um, the main improvements uh, in, um, in airborne gamma ray spectrometry has, has gone almost unnoticed, and uh, it's, a, it's a really quiet type of improvement, but it's mostly in the, the instrumentation. Uh, all the, uh, the instrumentation has been moved to digital electronics. Uh, and uh, yeah, although it, it doesn't seem that exciting, uh, it made a very, very robust system now uh, with an uh, unprecedented level of, of consistency um, and renewed data quality. And um, what, this, uh, what this allows to do now is to, uh, to uh, in, in, in considering this, this issue, I would say, or readability, it allows to revisit uh, some uh, some data analysis ideas that were um, uh, suggested uh, before, but were deemed a bit challenging because of, of lacks in uh, in uh, in the equipment. Uh, so now we can uh, look uh, at more in more details about those techniques and see those um, procedures or, or ideas and see if we can apply them now. Um, so uh, the talk today, instead of looking at the last ten years, will. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll look at uh, a, a few ideas that uh, came along in the last 40 years and uh, that should, uh, you know, people should invest time in, le in, the, in the next 10 years uh, so that we have uh, a, a different summary uh, in 10 years from now. Um, and hopefully those, uh, those uh, yeah, those uh, techniques can help um, improve uh, the, f the data product. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I made this very simple cartoon of airborne uh, gamma ray spectrometry. What it does, uh, um, it maps uh, potassium, uranium, and thorium in the first 30 centimeter of uh, of the ground. Um, the resulting uh, uh, measurement is a is a gamma ray uh, spectrum, which I have at the at the left on the slide. Um, and uh, from which uh, the information on the concentration of potassium, uranium, and uh, thorium are extracted. It's a surface technique, as I mentioned. Uh, it's been our experience that many, many times um, the surface material is locally derived, so you can link it to the bedrock underneath. Um, and it's important to mention it's a, it's a compositional uh, method as opposed to most of other most other geophysical technique, which are structural, uh, you were uh, you know we're imaging the composition of the material as opposed to the structural, which is uh, why it's interesting to to put in in uh, in uh, in tandem with with uh, aeromagnetic. Um, um, yeah, so I think that's what I had to say about that. The advancement during the last ten years. I'll come back a bit in more details uh, about that. What what I was saying. Um, so the main development of the last 10 years, uh, indeed, have been on the modernization to digital electronic. Uh, yeah, it's not uh, it's not that exciting, but uh, it has a significant it had a significant impact on 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 uh, data quality. 
Um, so uh, what it brought uh, is uh, full uh, linearization of uh, detector response. Um, uh, in the previous analog system, if you wandered off the main potassium, uranium, and thorium peak, uh, you, you could definitely see that as, as an issue. But now uh, the, the 1024 channel spectrums that are produced are perfectly uh, linearized, uh, so they're easy to add to, to other um, uh, system or compile, compile together. Um, the next thing has been uh, improvement in uh, a reduced pulse conversion time. Um, uh, so, um, so the the gamma ray photons that are captured by the by the system, um, uh, there's always a um, you know refer to as the dead time. The system is down for a few seconds like, analyzing the data. So uh, there there was a significant jump, I guess, in in this conversion time of filtering the pulse out of the photomultiplier tube to from. Uh, from uh, around 150 to 100 microsecond before to down to one microsecond now. So that, uh, the effect of that has been that much more gamma photon can be processed um, in, in the system. And um, the last uh, um, improvement that, uh, that uh, the, the digital electronics brought, um, and it's, it's in line, I guess, it's, it, it's a consequence almost of the first the linearization of a system is now that the gain stabilization, the way that you, you, uh, you calibrate in energy your, your spectrum, uh, are, uh, use templates, full template of potassium, uranium, thorium uh, spectrum as opposed to just trying to match uh, peaks, the main peaks, the three main peaks that, uh, that are measured. Um, so, uh, as a result of those those improvement, uh, there's now you know um, very uh, very accurate system um, uh, with a consistent uh, response uh, between detectors, um, and you can uh, basically uh, objectively compare um, uh, like different system flying the same survey or, or uh, different system flying different surveys, and you can also merge. Uh, the, the, the data coming from different detectors, uh, uh, distinct detectors used on, on, a, on a single survey. Um, uh, the the reduced pulse conversion also helped the uh, high saturation, um, the, the, to increase the saturation threshold. So uh, at some point, if you had more, uh, too many uh, counts in your detector, the, the system was saturating, couldn't uh, provide uh, measurements anymore. Uh, this has been raised quite a lot. Uh, this has, has more interest probably for, uh, for uh, security type surveys. Uh, this is where you can uh, get on a, on a big uh, big source, uh, but uh, it, it's also interesting for uh, for more geophysical surveys, especially if you fly over strong anomalies or aircraft happen to fly over a mine tailing or a thing that could um, um, con confuse a bit the system. Um, so. Uh, I'll, I put in a quick, uh, I realize I didn't have that much uh, data in the deck, so I, I, I put in a, a quick uh, example of an application, um, just so at least we have some, some, uh, you have some, uh, some data to, to see. Um, uh, th there's nothing necessarily, uh, it's a bit self-serving because it's coming from, uh, from, uh, from my shop. Um, there's nothing necessarily new uh, in this, but uh, maybe we, we've done it this time with, uh, t took a closer look at this type of data. Uh, this is a high resolution uh, helicopter borne survey flown over the, the uh, Athabasca Basin. And what we uh, were doing uh, there is that we're trying to follow up on some, some features we saw on, uh, on the regional scale survey and trying to understand what the signal, what, what was actually producing um, the signals. And what we ended up being able to do was to differentiate um, geochemically uh, landforms from different uh, ice flow uh, phases. Um, so you see a uh, number, uh, I hope you can see number six, which was all those numbers are ground station uh, 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 location where we, put, we, we took some data, but uh, uh, point number six is over this, uh, you know, kind of sizable uh, drumlins. And uh, on the, the left panel, uh, you see the potassium um, concentration, and uh, you see that uh, that drumlins is uh, as a you know high level of, of of potassium, and you put that in comparison with the the smaller uh, streamlined features uh, in the middle panel. I should say is the the terrain uh, 
so you see those those feature uh, those landforms showing up, and uh, so those uh, streamlined germinated features uh, uh, at two and four uh, are actually low in potassium. And th those you know this is um, different phases. The the the, the bigger drumlins is a uh, a consequence of um, of the main heist advance, while the the smaller drum drumlinoids were um, were remolded uh, during uh, probably a, a, a nice uh, margin adjustment. Um, so uh, you know uh, the interest of that is uh, maybe for, for scientific purposes. So I guess it's okay. Uh, but either even in an exploration perspective, it's it's kind of interesting because it allows to in places like the Athabasca Basin uh, or any places now where we look mostly at deep exploration. Uh, any surface uh, anomalies will be very, very faint. So you want to be able to understand the background very well to be able to notice those, those anomalies. Um, and uh, even more in this case, it gives you some places where it could be more useful, more interesting to sample, uh, do some surface geochemical sampling uh, in, in areas where you have low potassium and so where uh, anomalies uh, are, 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 um, have more chance to be, uh, to be uh, picked up. Um, Oops. Oh, I'll pass this. Uh, so now we'll go into those three ideas uh, from, from the past or uh, from before that uh, we could brought up again. The first one is uh, terrain correction. Um, the standard processing in, in gamma ray spectrometry implies uh, uh, a flat um, uh, surface. Uh, it's an, it's an acceptable approximation in many cases, uh, uh, but in many cases also it's not. And you see you have a, a, a deficit. If you fly over a ridge, you'll have a deficit in counts, as opposed if you fly in a valley, you, you may have more counts than what you should, uh, you should receive because the data is projected right uh, to the vertical, to the, to the ground. Um, so you have, um, you have um, an error there that you need to be corrected. And I have an example here uh, on the left panel uh, from, uh, from a paper from Schwartz and his colleague. Um, you see the, the, the bottom uh, graph and on the left side uh, shows uh, the terrain, the, the solid line with uh, the dashed line being the helicopter or the aircraft path. And you see how deep it goes in, in those valleys. And you see the corresponding signal uh, in counts per second on the top. Um, uh, on the top graphs, and you see those those uh, uh, like giant peaks uh, uh, that are measured. Uh, you know, to to convince uh, convince us that it's it's uh, it's artificial and it's due to the flight path. Um, uh, Schwartz and his colleague did some uh, some very simple analytic mo analytical modeling and created those um, those graphs on uh, on the right side. Uh, and you see that they're able to reproduce almost the same, uh, considering a uniform distribution of radio elements on the ground, they're able to reproduce almost the same, uh, the same curve. And, and so they use that as a correction factor. Uh, they, uh, they computed what uh, you would get uh, if there was a flat surface and did the ratio with uh, what, uh, what they get considering the terrain uh, that they flew over. And uh, this ratio was uh, applied back to the data measure to, to do a simple kind of correction factor. And it's a very effective uh, method. Uh, technique has not been used that much, but uh, uh, it should. But then, if you do uh, you do all this uh, uh, effort to do uh, to run an, uh, a model like this, uh, you d you're one step just bef before doing actual inversion. And a recent paper by Minty and Brody did somewhat that, and it's it goes beyond just a simple terrain correction uh, uh, because it improves also the whole uh, the the the. the, the um, the focus, I, I guess, of the data, but those, this definitely is uh, something to uh, investigate. Uh, spectral analysis, I'll try to go um, quicker now. Um, the, in the standard processing, uh, we use only uh, counts per second coming from three main photo peaks, while you see a typical spectrum contain a lot of photo peaks, and they're, they're all coming for th those three naturally occurring radio elements. Uh, there's nothing else, really. Uh, so there's a lot of information that is there, but it's not really used. Um, and in given this new uh, consistency of the, of the system, uh, the spectra can definitely be used uh, 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 easily. And you can come up with some sort of spectral fit um, 
uh, approach where you isolate or you create a unit spectrum of potassium, uranium, and thorium. Also radon that is, uh, is in the air that will affect your data and the cosmic also uh, uh, gamma rays coming from, uh, from uh, high energy interactions in the, in the high atmosphere that goes down to the, the Earth. And if you, you, you're able to create those unit spectra, you can uh, uh, fit them to your airborne measurements and get uh, the values and get uh, the values of concentration, but also get the full information uh, contained in, in the spectrum. The problem there is, is getting those, those unit spectra. And uh, efforts that have been done before in the, uh, in the 80s, starting in the 80s, uh, were using those big concrete pads. Uh, so measurements were done on the ground. And the sort of scattering environment is very different from an aircraft in the air. So uh, the lower energy part of the spectrum had to be cut out, cut out uh, from, from, the, from the, the processing. So uh, you, you, know, you gain a bit, but you know, still you were not able to uh, take the whole thing. Uh, but the next step would be uh, a fully, uh, instead of trying to create those, uh, measure or you know, uh, uh, model those, those unit spectrum, is to take a fully statistical approach uh, like the noise-adjusted singular value decomposition, which is kind of used a lot to, to indeed to uh, reduce noise in data. So uh, it's similar to principal component analysis. Uh, so you have a, a big data set and, uh, and you uh, decompose into, uh, into um, components and you can add those components back, you know, in, 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 uh, in, uh, superpose those components back to recreate, reconstruct your, your each spectrum from your data set. And you see at, uh, you know, it's, it's a ver varying uh, degree of, of, uh, of significance in the data set. And as you go in the higher component, it's mostly noise that you have. So you can cut those out uh, like you would do with, with principal component analysis in, in different contexts and just reconstruct your, your source spectrum uh, with with uh, the first uh, few spectrum, but although it's statistical, uh, it it uh, represents actual variation that you see in your data. Uh, so those uh, component could be um, uh, could be calibrated somehow. So there could be a way to. Uh, uh, um, you know, attach concentration to them, and uh, and that would definitely uh, you know you could then um, infer the concentration that you have, and you see from this example, uh, component two, three, and f and six, uh, you if you see the the potassium, um, uh, uranium, and thorium peak uh, uh, that we're typically measuring in airborne gamma spectrometry. Uh, um, and you see, uh, you see what those three components are doing is that they're 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 um, they're they're uh, contributing to the the concentration, but also to the effect of height uh, above ground. As you go higher, it's it's more attenuated. While uh, component four and five represent more radon, especially because the lower uh, energy peaks of uranium are very strong there, which is which is a a, um, a signature of of radon. And finally, uh, directionality. Um, the detectors are uh, omnidirectional. Uh, gamma rays coming from all directions are intercepted uh, by the by the, the crystal packs, uh, the detectors, and uh, there's uh, you know uh, they're, they're we don't know where they're coming from. But a typical uh, system has uh, four logs, four uh, sodium iodide logs uh, as detector, and uh, we can uh, make use of the sort of self-shielding. Uh, um, aspect of these uh, these detectors given that you can get, get the individual signature from each of those detectors and i'm getting to the, the next slides where you have a let's say a source uh in the ground and you see that detector one will receive much more gamma rays coming from this source as opposed to de detector uh, four which is kind of shielded a side face is shielded by detector uh, three so there's probably uh, there's a way definitely to uh, to um, to use that information in, into the data processing, though, so that that's not really been done so far in terms of in, the, in geophysics, um, but um, um, uh, so this uh, you know it's there, so it's is is there to try and, and do, um, and we extended this idea into uh, nuclear emergency response, creating this uh, hate. Uh, segment detector. Well, in uh, in uh, nuclear emergency response or in security, you often try to look just one big source. Uh, so this detector with this configuration gives us a total azimuthal and polar um, direction, and uh, we're trying to fit it with uh, to a UAV. And uh, hopefully, um, uh, this will have some some impact also on geophysics. So conclusion summary. Uh, 
Uh, the last 10 years, I've seen a transfer to market of highly robust, uh, highly consistent, fully digital AGRS uh, system. Um, this uh, reviewed, uh, renewed data quality um, offers the possibility to revisit uh, old ideas. Uh, we gave three examples here. Um, uh, but there's there's other things also available that's been uh, done in the past, so that's that's the future. That's uh, what's uh, what's coming, and hopefully this will improve the, the 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 quality of the data and the readability of the data. Thank you very much. We have, we have, we have time for a question, please. Yes, it's uh, it's more efficient. Um, it's cesium iodide is more efficient. Um, so yes, I confirm what you're saying. The only problem is that it's it's more expensive at the moment because the produc production is lower than uh, than sodium iodide, and uh, you don't have any sizes available as you have in in uh, sodium iodide. So, but you know, if there's more demand, I guess the price will will, will get lower. If you use a smaller egg drop, egg drop yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You can reduce the volume. You can reduce the volume of detectors using cesium iodide and have the same efficiency as you would have with sodium iodide. So it's a, it's a paradigm. You know, people have to move slowly to to those new detectors. Okay. Yeah. Well, we we um, I guess we're using what we have now. So uh, so and the idea is to that um, like contractors, people flying surveys. This is the equipment they have at the moment. So we're trying to find ways. Uh, that will improve, uh, you know, will limit the cost to to uh, to uh, to users. Uh, so, but yes, obviously we could, we could. And this 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 what I was trying to bring here with uh, with this detector. So you can build specialized detectors that will you know uh, favor those those features basically. Thank yeah. You. Thank you, everyone.